Okay, so previously we were talking about plant evolution and really where plants are located again in that tree of life. And so now, you know, we've discussed sort of the large organelles that sort of make a plant a plant. But today we're going to really be talking about um, how those function within a plant cell and uh, the, the structure and specific biology that plants um, offer. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the vascular structure. So we talked about how important that central vacuole is and also the, um, the cell wall, how it provides um, ultimately structure through, for the plant. Um, and, most, and many of the, and many plants, um, again, as we sort of progress up the evolutionary tree of plants, uh, have this complex vascular system. So it's going to comprise of two specific um, specific systems for trans, transport of nutrients and water. And that's, they're called the xylem and the phloem. So water travels up the xylem while nutrients that are developed higher up the plant tra travel down the phloem. So one of the first, uh, one of the first difficulties um, plants sort of um, uh, have is how do we get water from these root systems up the xylem and through the air uh, and, and, and ultimately um, evaporate off the top of the leaves. Um, so ultimately, the reason that water is able to essentially defy gravity in this case is because water is uh, chemically sticky. So water is a polar molecule, and we're going to be talking about um, more of the chemistry of life in a, in a later module. But a big part of the reason that um, uh, plants are able to use water as it is, is that they're very sticky molecules. So the molecules stick together. So at the very top of the plants, uh, water molecules are going to evaporate off the top of these leaves. And essentially, it's going to pull on every single water molecule down the plant, all the way down to the roots. And so this ev process of evaporation is essentially pulling water up the xylem. And what we call this, uh, this process, we call this process in plants um, transpiration. And that's where water is evaporating off the stoma um, and it's pulling water up the xylem. And then nutrients that are, that are being created um, in the chloroplasts um, and creating sugars travel down the phloem. So this is the complex sort of vascular structure that um, are really important to the vast majority of plants. So I really like sort of the um, how our how the chapter this week was it was structured, where it's basically a series of questions and understanding um, the biological processes that are involved in those questions. And the first, uh, the large question that is is addressed in, the, in this cha chapter is: Do plants have sex, or what does what does sexual reproduction look like for a plant? So ultimately, reproduction in plants is going to vary depending on their species. And remember, like thinking back to that evolutionary um, uh, chart of a uh, cladogram, looking at um, the relationships of various species, the reproduction is going to uh, change very dramatically from a you know a more simplistic sort of uh, or a more ancient fern to a a, a a a plant, for example, that has flowers and fruit. The, and their reproduction is ultimately going to change. Um, and so some, some of these plants are going to contain male and female reproductive organs that are, are going to produce these haploid gametes, and then when they meet, they're going to create uh, fertilization. But there is also asexual reproduction in plants. So, what, so do plants have sex is actually sort of a complex question. There are some plants that, that do sort of pr produce sexually, and then there are some that produce asexually, and there are some that, do, that produce both. So we've got sort of a broad range of um, sexual reproduction happening in plants. So I'm not going to ask you to memorize all of these uh, different life cycles, but what I want you to, to realize is that there is a, a um, vast diversity in how different plants have evolved to, um, to reproduce. So what a moss life cycle looks like is going to be different from a fern life cycle. Um, so both of these are going to require water to carry the different um, gametic parts to create um, your, 
your um, your zygote, uh, which contains both male and female parts so you can reproduce. Um, however, that life cycle is going to look very different when we start moving into things that have seeds. And ultimately, in, con in a conifer life cycle where the seeds are exposed, that's going to look very different to an angiosperm life cycle where we have, where um, you've probably had um, bi biology courses that have gone through looking at uh, reproduction of um, of plants uh, for those that have flowers and create seeds. So all of these are going to look very different depending on where we're at in that diversity of, of tree and what um, and specifically whether or not we're talking about sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction. So just know that there are differences um, that occur for, throughout these, um, these different clades. So another important aspect of, of plant biology is understanding how plants are able to respond to stimuli. So unlike, you know, un unlike other eukaryotic cells, we, we, we're talking about sort of basic fundamental changes in hormones and that is ultimately going to drive a lot of changes that we see and responses that we see for plants. And I have a specific video that I'd like to, you to watch looking at different hormone um, responses in plants. But broadly speaking there are sort of three uh, types of stimuli that I'd really like you to understand. The first being phototropism, so understanding how plants respond to light. Graviotropism, which is basically how plants respond to gravity. And last, lastly, thigmotropism. <laughs> thigmotropism, sorry. Got caught up on my tongue there. Um, and all of these are, are ultimately how plants have adapted to respond to light, gravity, and touch. Um, and... Uh, specifically within these, we have different hormones that allow cells to essentially elongate and move from one end of the other, to, and, and essentially what we would categorize as moving <laughs> um, from one end to the other. Um, and specifically looking at this uh, um, hormone auxin, which is responsible for a lot of these changes. And again, you know, we have that more specific video that I'd like you to watch um, that just talks through some seminal experiments that um, helped us to determine how uh, plants were able to respond to light, how they were able to respond to touch, and how they were able to respond to gravity. So in conclusion for plants, plants ultimately are a part of the domain eukarya. So we've talked about prokaryotes, now we're in eukarya. And there are four primary evolutionary adaptations that separate the various classes of plants. Plants are surrounded by a cell wall made of cellulose and a central vacu vacuole creates that turgor pressure that allows, um, that puts pressure, well, pressure, <laughs> pressure, sorry, not pressor, against the cell wall and creates structure. And Plants have a very complex vascular system that's made up of xylem and phloem. This allows it to get water and nutrients. And plants can reproduce in a variety of ways, both sexual and asexual. So that concludes our module six. So that we were looking, at, we were able to look at both prokaryotic diversity and start to zoom into eukaryotic diversity. And we're going to pick up next week looking more specifically at other types of eukaryotic diversity. So take a break, take some time for yourself, go outside, and I'll see you next week.